and welcome to this very special Mandela Day edition of Trends Travel. Today we find ourselves smack bang in the middle of exclusive books right here in Sandton City and what we're doing here is a surprise so I'll tell you more about that a little bit later. Right now, though, we invite you to join us as we celebrate the life of renowned musician, activist and philanthropist Johnny Clegg, who sadly passed away this week. Among his many achievements, Clegg started Jaluka, which was South Africa's first interracial band, which broke many barriers, cultural barriers that is, and also broke many laws as it was illegal in our country at the time. Our country now celebrates his life. As we celebrate Mandela Month, we also pay tribute to one of South Africa's legendary singer and activist Johnny Clegg, who lost his battle with pancreatic cancer this past week. Popularly known as White Zulu, Johnny Clegg's music career breakthrough came in the 70s when he and musician Sipom Tunu formed a mixed race band called Juluka. The band won the hearts of many fans here at home and abroad and recorded seven albums, two of which went platinum and five others gold. Was you know been having a good time, sleeping together in the bush, they, you know, spent time in the, in the park everywhere, you know. We used to have a lot of good time, yeah. But I must say, man, I've lost. That was a good guy for me, was a... You know, yeah, I said to the people, whoever asked me, I said, you know, if I can do something, I said, no. To me, it's finished, that's it. Clegg was also known as an activist. He had been an outspoken critic of the apartheid government of South Africa through song. It was his outspoken nature that earned him recognition for his service to the Rainbow Nation. In 2012, he was awarded the Presidential Order of the Ikamanga. He was incredible in that he, um, I think what I recall so much about him was, was the anthropological side of things. It really, really was, um, it, 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 it was, it was quite something he knew. He wasn't, he wasn't, he, he really was uh, an African. The crowd roared and that's when you realize that Johnny had crossed the Rubicon, that he was part of, you know, we, we were one. Yeah, you know? and it was a, it was a wonderful memory. Um, Johnny was a, um, a hard worker, he was a quiet man, he was somebody that didn't, he didn't jawl, he didn't see him out, um, he kept to himself quite a lot actually, um, but we had a, there were a lot of memories. The 66 year old musician retired from performing in 2018 and bid his fans farewell with an international tour named The Final Journey, appearing with a variety of artists, including his son Jesse Clegg. In 1990, Johnny Clegg wrote a song for his only son, Jesse, titled Cruel, Crazy, Beautiful World. And in 2017, just before he dropped the mic on his final tour, Jesse dedicated a song titled I've Been Looking to his beloved father. Clegg was laid to rest at West Park Cemetery in Johannesburg. He is survived by his wife and son. For many adults, a trip to the hair salon is a time for pampering and relaxation. But quite the opposite is true for kids, until Kitty's Corner. Kitty's Corner is a child-friendly space with super patient hairstylists who understand the hair care needs of kids. For Ling and her daughter, stop by to try out this concept. Getting salon pampered is not only for adults. These hair savvy kids know a good hair day requires a visit to a salon and they show up in numbers. An expert in kids' grooming gave us an insight into the latest kids' hair trends. Today's corner came from my personal experiences growing up doing my hair. Um, I hated doing my hair. Um, I remember crying at the salon and they'd say, You know, um, my mom couldn't manage my hair as well. And then growing up, I'd go to a salon and I'd see a little girl sitting there crying. Same experience and it resonated within me and I was like, we have to change the narrative. And I decided to open a kiddies hair salon. Kids salon is more child friendly. I mean, for one, 
when some parents walk in or some kids they think it's a crash because the concept is not so very well known at the moment you know just the look and the feel of the salon has to be child friendly another thing is the stylus how gentle they are patience I mean we've plotted kids walking mm. so that's just um, the patience the level of patience that we take as far as I know and based on the research I've done um, before it there was not much kid salons for ethnic hair and I believe I started this for the African child the brown child you know with ethnic hair often described as unmanageable there has been the very divided debate on whether to relax or not to relax in terms of products um, things times have evolved I mean there are more products for natural hair you go on YouTube it tips on how to look after natural hair as per before when the hair was tangled you just put chemical on it you know what I mean so they are like if there's relaxing involved and you don't unbuzz it for under 12 is that you do it when it's I don't know I, I don't like it I, I really don't like it but it's a last option there are moms that really can't manage here anymore you know what I mean but there are products that soften the hair the next big question is who sets the styling trends in kitty's hair with Kitty's hair trend, at the moment it's gonna sound a little bit pompous, <laughs> but we create the trend. That's what I've seen on social media. Kitty's Corner puts out a hairstyle and every salon comes. So every week, or oh, there is a salon, a style of the week that would put on, boost it on social media, and everybody just goes crazy about that. And they come back with our work and they wanna do it. So at the moment, I, I think we are the trendsetters. Little girls are little girls, and almost all of them look at Disney characters and want those flowing locks. But yes, princesses in ethnic hair can definitely be done. Ethnic hair, we do so many hairstyles, the beads alone, where Princess Sophia can put beads on, but as a little black girl, you can do that with your hair. So I feel like um, the other races should be jealous of what the capabilities of our ethnic hair, what we can do with it. And the little girls love it. They, they love chopping and changing hairstyles. It seems that the girls have it all, but there's something for the boys too. Watching a kiddies flick while they have their haircut. Boys come in for haircuts. Um, they are becoming trendy now, and they're doing these hair fade cuts, and then they, they plait their hair here. I forgot what that hairstyle is called, but I'm seeing a lot of that as well. And having it relaxed and it just stands up <laughs> yeah but yeah those are the things they do so what is the next step for kitty's corner because the space is so small have a corner for mummies as well eventually because it's very convenient for the mom to come here and they love our work as well and there'll be a mummy's corner so yeah eventually we've got so much more exciting stuff coming up after the break so don't go anywhere Gary. And on a more serious note, load shedding is back. Yo, for every kind of serious, there's a glass of not so serious. Come for yours with Tops at Spa. Nelson Mandela Day is an international day set up by the United Nations in 2009 which celebrates the legacy and life of Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela spent 67 years fighting social injustice and it's for this reason that millions around the world spend 67 minutes of their time promoting peace and fighting poverty. We are at Sunshine Convention Centre today and we are participating in an initiative called Rise Against Hunger, uh, which is an initiative that's been, in fact this is its 10th year that it's been in existence and it's uh, in honour of Mandela's centenary, very very special year this year as well, um, because this is where all volunteers get 
behind this initiative contribute 67 minutes of their time to pack food and gifts etc for those that are really needing some sustenance and some energy in, in today's day and age. Trends Travel attended Soho Sun Hotel's biggest packaging event where some of South Africa's favorite personalities also added the power of their voices to the room in support of the Rise Against Hunger campaign for Mandela Day. Today I think it's just about spending time with like-minded people to help the less privileged. I mean we're spending 67 minutes packing meals for those who aren't as privileged as us and I just think that it's a blessing to be doing this. So for me it's really personal because I have a background coming from you know not having much to eat when I was younger and so I understand the struggles that people go through. So now being privileged enough to give back is just so great. It's like a blessing to me. So yeah, I just want to have fun and then impact as many lives as we can through this initiative. Well, I'm about to pack some meals for uh, the less fortunate and uh, yeah, this is uh, something very close to my heart. Uh, philanthropy and humanitarianism is something very close to my heart. I believe that um, as a artists or whatever it is in the entertainment space that we do we should redirect the spotlight to what matters most and this is one of those projects to do so so uh, 67 minutes for Madiba um, is a very good way of going about it um, I'm doing this because I believe uh, in giving back um, and what I'm expecting for today is I'm not actually sure I know that we're packing sandwiches um, I'm very used to this kind of thing but uh, I don't think on this level because I believe there's quite a lot of people but I'm very excited um, to give back like I said I, I believe it's you know 67 minutes every day if you can yeah I'm doing it uh, I think um, for, for a great cause yeah uh, obviously you have to remember uh, the Mandela Day, you know, when uh, actually what it means, you know, when and try and walk in Mandela's shoes, you know, especially for, for those who are unfortunate, you know, than us. And I think today it's very, very important that uh, we do show our support and we, we commemorate and, and again uh, celebrate it, you know, in a good way. Initially operating as Stop Hunger Now, the Rise Against Hunger Africa Hunger Eradication Program, which this year celebrates its 10th anniversary, includes raising funds for meals, meal packaging events, and distributing meals through a result-oriented nutrition program that monitors and evaluates the progress of beneficiaries to ensure maximum impact. So as part of the Nelson Mandela uh, Day, um, we're very grateful to Santon Convention Center for uh, sponsoring this venue for us. And and we've invited all the corporates around the Johannesburg area to come along. Each corporate uh, makes a donation and they send a team of 20 volunteers to come and pack for 67 minutes. Each team is packing on average around about, about five, five and a half thousand meals in their 67 minutes. So our target today is about 350,000 meals. Each packet contains uh, six meals, uh, six adults, ten children. It's a very balanced, nutritious meal. So it's got soup mix in it with dehydrated vegetables, it's got soya for protein, rice. Uh, we're very fortunate to have Tastic Rice, who's been our sponsor for five million meals this year. Um, it also has a vitamin sachet in each bag, which contains 23 different vitamins and minerals. So it's a very nutritious, balanced meal, which is, which is perfect, especially for children between ages of, of one and five. The target this year is to pack 3 million meals in 9 cities during Mandela month, with an anticipated 316,000 meals being packed at Santon Convention Centre alone. Literally thousands of volunteers streamed into the Santon Convention Centre to make that happen, packing boxes of nutritional meals and raising awareness of the need for nutritional support for children in non-government supported ECD centres. With morale being at an excited high and packers busying themselves on the floor to make the most of their shift, this warehouse type environment was transformed into something resembling Santa's workshop and helpful little elves doing their bit to end hunger in Africa and South Africa. By 12 midday and about 6 sessions in, individuals from various companies volunteering their 67 minutes had packed a massive 180,000 meals.
by now, Madiba would say, please stop talking about me and start doing what I said, I, what I said. you know, I think that, um, you know, I think, uh, let's face it, I, I, without being rude, I think that we are a little bit mandela out in, in terms of, you know, uh, and I think that, that uh, maybe I'm the brave one that's brave enough to say that, but, but I think that what I, what I mean by that is I think that Madiba would be, would be wishing that we had moved on to doing instead of talking. We'd love to know what you've been doing with your 67 minutes on Mandela Day, so why not hit us up on Twitter or on Instagram, that's on Trends on SABC, using the hashtag SABC News. We stay on the visuals, they're busy shooting. In, uh, it, we drove around this. Come on, in the world, in the world, we. The SABC News mobile app is your one-stop digital portal to all the news you need. Stay connected with the latest in breaking news. Watch the SABC News channel along with clips and live streams of all the big news events. And listen to all the SABC News radio stations live, including podcasts and much more. Simply download the SABC News app to your Android or iOS device from either the Play Store or the App Store. SABC News. Independent. Impartial. Jeffries Bay is home to the best right-hand surf break in the world. International surfers come from all over the world to try it out and we sent Nadia out to do the same. We might not have white sands in South Africa, but our beaches are beautiful, the water's warm and perfect all year round. Our ocean does not only attract sunbathers and swimmers, but it is also popular amongst the surfing community from all over the world wanting to ride the perfect wave. We headed down to Jeffreys Bay in the Eastern Cape, known for its popular giant waves, where we attended this year's World Surf League. We came all the way to Jeffreys Bay for a World Surfing Competition, and we have the champions right here to teach us how to surf. The World Surf League is the global home of surfing, dedicated to celebrating the world's best surfing on the world's best waves. It possesses a deep appreciation for the sport's rich heritage while promoting progression, innovation and performance at the highest levels. Walking to the beach we were filled with excitement until the tutorial began and the facial expressions changed. The lesson was not too bad, it still seemed doable. We were happy to have gotten our lesson without any giant waves. <laughs> well, at least I was. Precision is key. You have to jump on the board at an exact moment. Balance yourself and paddle away on a strong wave, of course. Staying on the board and actually trying to stand is a different story altogether. It's my second time surfing, but definitely the best time I've ever had surfing. The water was very warm, the teachers were very patient. Definitely one of the best surfing spots in the world, and I see why now. I started surfing when I was about eight or nine years old, and since then, for the last uh, 30 years, oh no, I'm not that old. It's been amazing, the most incredible setup here, overlooking the waves. There's cold coronas, there's lots of people, there's live music, and every year they put on an incredible show. And I think people from South Africa should uh, celebrate this. You know, it's a world class wave, and it's like a South African and world icon in the surfing world. So, yeah, it's, it's epic. 
The night ended with everyone dancing to live music in the park. As I mentioned earlier, we are an exclusive books right here in Santon City and boy do we have a surprise for you. While the world is celebrating Mandela Day, we are commemorating the third year of the passing of Africa's fastest brother, Gugu Zulu. But more than that, we are celebrating Letseho Zulu and her new book, I Choose to Live Life After Losing Gugu. Exactly a year after Gugs passed, I stand at the base of Kilimanjaro and stare at the spot where my husband and I once stood. The last photo of us together is still clearly in my mind. At Adventure Couples Ede is ready to own Kilimanjaro. As I stand here a year later, there's an aching lump in my throat, but no tears. I feel his presence here. The nine-hour hike from Kibu Hut to the summit Uhuru turns out to be one of the most physically challenging journeys I have ever experienced. While the gradient is steep, the real challenge lies in the lack of oxygen. My body is pushed to the brink of its physical limits, and reaching the summit becomes an arduous mental game. The first two hours pass by relatively quickly, but then as the air becomes thinner, fatigue sets in. I start to get really drowsy. It feels like I am pushing forward in a stupor. Setting one foot in front of the other feels dreamlike. My eyelids are so heavy that I feel as though I'm sleepwalking. Three hours of walking with limited oxygen starts to take its toll on my psyche. The last four hours of the hike are an out-of-body experience. We are all taking strain. We're here, a voice cuts through the thin air. I realize that ever since leaving Stella Point, I have been looking down as I trek. Now I lift my head and it dawns on me. We've reached Uhuru. It's 18th July, 2017. A moment of silence passes. I look up at the sign. Congratulations, you are now at Uhuru Peak, Tanzania. I fall apart. Realizing that we have made it to the summit of Kilimanjaro, my walls crumble and I experience a surge of raw emotion. We did it, I whisper through tears. My heart aches with the pain of a year without Gooks, combined with the overwhelming joy of achieving our goal. I cry freely. I reach for my backpack and pull out a banner I made before the trick. Gooks' face stares back at me and I'm filled with a profound strength. We got to Uhuru. The TV crew from SABC, Tabu Madilola, and my friend Jillian pull me aside for a brief interview about how I feel. I had to keep reminding myself why I needed to summit. And, uh, you know, thoughts and reminders and memories of my darling husband when I got to the summit rushed through my mind and that's why it was such an emotional summit. But um, a victorious one as well, because I did it. We did it. I did it for us. I finished off what we started in 2016. That was an excerpt from Lesejo's new book, I Choose to Live, Life After Losing Gugu. Hundreds of fans flocked to exclusive books for her launch and a bit of a Q&A. But before that, we sat down for a bit of a one-on-one. -on -one. I think the reason why I opened up so much is, is because now that I've come to terms with it, there's so many people that were still left with question marks and I thought, you know what, let me just fill in the gaps for them. Let me tell them exactly what went on on the mountain. And this was my story that people have shown so much interest in and so much love that I felt I wanted to take them on the journey step by step just so they can understand and see you know exactly what it is that I went through and how I managed to continue to choose living life because there is life to be lived. Additionally she shares all the lessons she's learned since bidding farewell to her daughter's father and all the mental shifts that followed including taking off her ring. One thing that I've learned is that grief actually teaches you a lot about yourself. A lot of those life lessons that I refer to from my past only really came to the surface once I lost Googs and that's when I then started I guess you know applying them to my journey to rebuilding so yes it's you know I've learned a lot about myself and I just wanted to share that with people because a lot of people also don't realize that they've got those life lessons within them they just don't know how to apply them to life. What were you took your ring off on the mountain? I was broken. Yeah. And I do understand the logic of it, but I was like, 
Why did you choose to share that personal moment? I wanted to share as much as I could. You know, I had an amazing relationship with Googs for 15 and a half years. And very often we had people asking us, how do we do it? So I literally wanted to give people a glimpse of our relationship while we were together and our relationship after. The, the reason why I shared, um, you know, the moment of removing my ring is because people do actually ask you, why is your ring off? People then also in the same line ask you, when are you going to open yourself up to love again? So it's one of those things that you just you juggle and you don't know what to do when. I decided that I would honor him for a year, but the truth of the matter is on our wedding day, we said, till death do us part. And we actually parted on the 18th of July, 2016. Great, thank you very much. And that's all we have for you in our very special Mandela Day edition of Trends Travel. We'd like to hear from you, so why don't you hit us up on our Twitter and Instagram pages right here. I'm Louise Scobel signing out. We'll see you again next week, same time, same place.